Well, each week we like to break down stories from the three levels of government with CTV's political commentator, Scott Reed, and he joins us live now. Hey, Scott, good morning. morning guys. Hey, Scott, good to see you. Okay, so let's start with the federal government this week because the big story, it sort of broke last week. Uh, NDP and Liberals, part of the circumference supply agreement, have forged some kind of a pharmacare deal. Who do you think is going to be the political kind of hero or winner in this one? Pierre Polyev. Uh, look, Polyev. You, I, I, look okay. here's the thing. I mean, this is fascinating. That Yes, it's about pharmacare, so a small number of drugs for diabetes and contraception will be covered. That's, I, I guess, a good thing. Mm -hmm. I think what's really interesting, though, is actually this is a breakthrough to preserve the agreement between the NDP and the Liberals to preserve this parliament. Yeah. So mm. now, having restruck this deal... Justin Trudeau knows that he can govern like he has a majority government, even though he's got a minority parliament. And what's that mean? It means that we're not going to have an election for at least a year. Yeah. Why is that good for the Liberals? Well, because they're at about 0, 0.0 integers yeah. in the polls, right? Yeah. I, I think, though, what's really interesting is, politically, there was an opportunity to break this deal up. And I think for the Liberals to say, you know what, we're no longer going to be positioned by the agenda that we've struck with the NEP. And we're going to show the courage to say, nope, we're not doing this anymore. We're going to chart our own course. They could have had navigated around the budget, which is a confidence vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now this cements in the minds of voters that these two parties are working together. I think it really benefits Pierre Polyev because he says, listen, instead of funding core health care, these guys are doing boutique programs. Instead of working as independent parties, they're working together. There's only one way to get change, and he's going to pound and pound and pound. Mm -hmm. He's at 41 percent in the polls. Yeah. In political speak, that is lapping the field. Hmm. 17 up on the Liberals right now. You never see the it's Liberals. It's scary if you're the Liberals. Like yeah. You are in 24%. 20, mm -hmm. This is not territory from which you rally easily. Yeah. they got a lot of work to do in the next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, they got a bit, they've bought themselves some more time, I suppose. They Yes, it's yeah. an expensive purchase, though. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, turning to things on the provincial level, it looks like university funding for you know colleges as well. That's on its way, though. The Ford government's lifeline is about $1.1 billion short of a government panel's recommendation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is really really interesting. It got more interesting this morning, in fact. There's a newspaper report, or I should say a broadcast report, that suggests that, in fact, the ministry that's responsible for this had recommended that the tuition freeze be lifted to give universities a steadier oh. stream of income, a mm -hmm. higher stream of income. The way I look at this is this is an issue to keep your eye on because our university and colleges sector is busted. Yeah. It got busted during COVID. It was straining before then. Now we're shutting down the stream of international students, which unfortunately a lot of universities have become addicted to, like crack in terms yeah. of that money it provided yeah. them. And this is not in any way, shape or form an answer. Yes, 1.1 or 1.3 billion sounds like a lot, but we're gonna have to figure out how do we remake the whole university and colleges sector. There's no plan, there's no sustainable funding, there's no real answers, and it's going to cause stresses. So if you got a kid in university or you got a kid who's set to go to university or college, you're gonna be concerned about this. Mm -hmm. And I think we're gonna to have to watch this space. This is gonna come back to bite them over and over and over again. Yeah, it seems to be. Okay, so it's a story that really is not going away. So we'll watch this one. In the meantime, at the local level here in Toronto, we know Toronto found out they're getting six World Cup matches instead of five, but yeah. that's increased the price tag to about $380 million from the city. Uh, what do you make of this? How much of a concern should this be down at City Hall? <laughs> I'm so shocked. When uh -huh. they said that I'll we imagine. were going to get World Cup games, did you imagine that the budget would be minded very carefully? Maybe we'd fly that plane in under budget? <laughs> I sure didn't. Yeah. This $80 million increase uh -huh. is the first of more to come. we got two more years before the World Cup gets yeah. here, before right. FIFA lands yeah. and FIFA. Does it stand for we take your money and you get as little as possible? Yes, it does. <laughs> so I think this is going to be interesting to watch the mayor navigate, in particular for this mayor, because her voter coalition is not jiggy with this breads and circuses thing. Mm. They are not going to be excited about shelling out while we're trying to save money and raise taxes in other places. So I think this is going to be a political challenge for the mayor. She's going to have a tough time defending it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're done seeing the price tag rise. Mm -hmm. That's the way yeah. it goes with these big Typically, national events, yeah. particularly FIFA. Big yeah. price tag that never stops asking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't have any expectations until no. it actually it's happens. It's a corner kick to the uh, you know where. So. <laughs> yeah, don't it's, like those. It's an own goal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To yeah. quote someone. Okay, yes, that's morning. right. That's right. right. Yeah. CTV's political commentator Scott Reed. Always a pleasure, Scott. Thank you for your time. Thanks, guys. Have See a great you next week, week Scott. Yeah. You betcha.